All right, guys, welcome back to Back to Basics. Uh, again, for people who are new here, quickly, what this is, is we're taking a handful of Trade Ideas employees who have worked with us for a while but haven't really traded and are interested in getting into it. And we're going over kind of from the absolute beginning to the very, very advanced of our technology. We started with what is a stock, and now we're a few lessons, probably two lessons away from actually having them paper trade. Um, so if you've missed that, there is a, on our website and on the YouTube channel, there's a playlist where you can go and watch them all in order and soon they'll be in the hot seat and we'll actually be trading and we'll be critiquing trades and talking about different, different swing trading methodologies and ideas. So that will be super fun. If you are a trade idea subscriber, you'll have access to the paper trading that I'm going to show you in a second soon. If you're not, there's a link down below and you can save a couple bucks off, off when you buy there really cool and and something i definitely recommend to all new traders right don't just hop into it um, start to get uh, familiarized with everything so today we're going to start covering the actual mechanics of trading so we did a lot of uh, theory and a lot of you know methodologies and, and uh, candlestick analysis and technical analysis and you know uh, fundamental and a little bit of statistical in the last couple we went over the web version of trade ideas the AI and all of the functionality you have there. Today, I'm gonna to show you a little bit about the download it, which is pretty much the same. And we're gonna go, again, specifically order, order types, right? So the actual mechanics of, I found a stock I wanna buy, how am I gonna to go to the system and actually do it? So this is a pretty important one for, again, for you guys and for anyone who's interested in the paper trading modules. So uh, first, different order types, right? So there are different ways to say I want those shares or I want to sell those shares. So for the purpose of this, uh, this webinar, anytime that I say buy, you could replace that with sell, but for entry and for exits of positions, all of the order types are the same. And there's four major ones. There's some crazier ones after that, but we're going to stick to the basics on this to, to start with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the order type. I'm going to show that to you. And then we're going to go into the system and I'm actually going to place an order like that in the paper trading module. So you guys can see kind of exactly how it's done um, instead of just the, the theoretical here. So the first one is the most popular and I have kind of the traits of each one listed up here as well. So this is the most popular. It's the lowest risk and it's kind of what I suggest you want to do. So what a limit order does in just plain English terms is I want to buy a stock and I'm only willing to pay this price, right? So I have an example down here where if, if Apple is trading at hundred dollars and you want to buy Apple, you've done all your analysis and, and you say, okay, I want to go buy it and I'm willing to pay up to $101, but no more. You know, I don't want to have by the time I've decided to buy Apple to the, actually going and, and hitting the button, if it spikes 10%, well, then I may not want it anymore. It may not fit what I was looking at. It may not fit my risk reward. So I'm only willing to pay up to $101. So you can put out that order and what it will do is say, give me anything up to that price, but only that price. So if it's able to get you $100 exactly, it will get you that, right? If it was able to get you $100.10, it will get you that. It will get you everything the lowest possible price in the market up until that amount. So you got to think back to when we went over order flow and, and you know, how that kind of worked and how you had your bid and your offer, right? So what you're doing is you're saying, I want to buy not just that offer that's there, but if that moves by the time I'm sending out my order, I'm willing to pay up to this certain price, right? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the system here. This is the downloaded version. Um, this is what you guys are going to be playing with. Uh, and right now it's the only place that our paper trading module exists at. And let's go to Apple, right? What you're going to see is when you type in a symbol or when you click on a symbol, your brokerage plus module is actually going to change that symbol. So whatever it is that you're looking at, when you click on this, it's going to show you that symbol there. The other way you could do it is you could actually just type it in here if you want it to trade that symbol. So you just find out whatever symbol it is you want and make sure it's populated here. And that's in this area here. 
Next to it is the share size. And then next to it here are the order types. So this is going to be the bar we're going to play in for this particular lesson that's going to show everything that's, that's happening. So right now you can see Apple closed today at uh, $219.82. So let's call it $220. Now, assuming the market was open and I wanted to buy this stock and place this trade, I would simply go in and I would type in Apple or bring it up anywhere that it's now populated in the, in the symbol side right here. Pick out how many shares I want to buy. And this is something we're going to go through later when we talk about the actual trading plan, but the amount of shares that you want to buy is going to be determined on your risk, right? So if, for example, I'm going to buy it here at 220 and I'm going to say I'm wrong at 215, right? That's $5 a share. So then what you do is you say, okay, I'm willing to risk 50 bucks on this trade, right? So for $5 a share, I'm going to buy 10 shares. Right? So you see how you back into the amount of shares you want to buy based off the amount that you're willing to risk. And then what you do is you say, okay, what price am I willing to pay? Right? So say it's at 220 right now is where it closed and I'm willing to pay 221. So I'll put in my 10 shares here and I'll go to the price and I'll just put in uh, 221. And then I'll hit buy. Okay, they may not show up on the chart. And this is why we're not doing the actual paper trading yet because things are still a little bit buggy. Um, essentially what would happen here is in your orders tab, you would see that this order was open. There would just be an order here that says, you know, buy Apple at 220 for 10 shares. If you, for whatever reason, didn't want to do it, say you didn't get filled and you're like, okay, now I'm not interested anymore. You just highlight that and hit the cancel button right here and that order will just go away uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that it will pop up here on the chart right here as a blue line that will say buy and you can then kind of drag it around the chart as you will um, how long does it take for an order to be filled or is there it could be any amount of time well that's the thing if you're trying to buy at the market price or above it should only take a second Oh, I see. But you, you were under a little bit. Right. right. Is that... if, if you're under or if by the time you fill out the order and hit the button, if the market's moved, then it could, in theory, never get filled. Right? The other thing, you know, I'm assuming that you want to buy Apple right here where it is. But say, for example, you're a pullback trader. We talked about the different types of momentum traders, people buying stocks as they're moving up. We talked about people buying stocks as they're pulling back. And then we talk about people trying to pick tops and bottoms. So say you wanted to only put out an order if Apple pulled back into this area. For whatever reason, your analysis says, okay, I think Apple is going to pull back here and then bounce. So I want to buy it in here, right? You can also, the same way with a limit order, you can go and say, okay, well, that's 210, right? So I want to then go back in here and I want to buy this stock and I just want to fill out 210. And now that order will stay out there indefinitely until it comes back and gets hit or until you cancel it, right? So again, if you're a pullback trader and you say, I want to put out my order that it will buy it if it gets here and then go about my day, it will just stay there until you decide to cancel it or until the price gets hit, right? So that's a limit order. So you can do the same thing on, on buying and on selling. You can either put it at the market price below or above, but it basically secures that price. It says, okay, I'm only going to get uh, that particular price. And at the same time I'm doing this, if you guys just don't mind for one second, I want to open up. So we may just cut this out or if I'm quick, we may leave it in. I'm just going to try to load up yours to see if that works. Uh, and you guys let me know how this screen switching counts. Michael, I have a quick question. Yep. What's the uh, main reason why people paper trade? The main reason for paper trading is that and again, let me know how seamless when I switch screens and do that. 
if that worked well. Um, main reason to paper trade is a, you know, you don't know when you start trading, you don't know what you don't know, right? I am sure you guys have heard that before. There's stages of learning, right? Right now, you know, everything probably looks really um, confusing and, and, uh, and there's so much to do. So the first part of paper trading is just getting in and learning your system. Even myself, who's been trading for years, if I were to sit down in front of a new brokerage system I've never played with before, I'm going to spend the first couple of days just paper trading, just to learn the system, right? To learn what buttons do what and, you know, where things go. You know, unfortunately, I've heard people before hopping into new systems and thinking that this button would, you know, put out a stop loss so they were protected and then they went about their day and they lost more money than they thought they would. Things like this. The other reason you can paper trade is A, you're just not profitable yet. You know, there's, there's an old saying, if you're not profitable in paper, you won't be profitable in real life. So you might as well take the time, hone your craft, you know, learn in the paper side, understanding that there's that whole emotional jump when you get into real money, but at least you understand your system. The main reason I still use paper trading is I'm a systems-based trader. So what I do is I back test and I, I, I come up with algorithmic systems and then I want to try those out in the real world but I don't want to go right from um, the back test to risking my money, right? So the paper trading is this thing in the middle where I can trade my own money for things that I know that work and I've traded with over time. Anything that's new and different, I can put in a paper trading side, watch that. And then once I'm comfortable that it's making money on the paper trading side, I can go into the real world with it. Yeah, that was just, I guess, going to be my next question. Like, um, why would established traders paper trade? So. Yep, there's that. And then there's the fact that this is a, it's a performance-based game. You know, there's some times where, uh, you know, I, I, I trade and we're all in Slack chatting all the time. So I'm chatting with a lot of the other traders that work at Trade Ideas. And we all just get to a point where you're just not seeing it right. You know, you're, you're just... It, it's not making sense to you. Things that used to work didn't work now. And then the best traders in that period just take a step back. Sometimes they go back into paper and they just play around with a new strategy until they get something that they like. Then they come back to risking real money. So, okay. So then like, like let's say I paper traded something like, you know, right now and the market was open yep. and it worked for me and I was happy with it. Then I would actually just go back and do that for real. Right. Yes. So yeah, if you came up, yeah, if you came up with a theory, that's the beauty of, so what's going to happen is right now you can see it says connecting to paper trading, but at the same time, you can just connect the same thing to your brokerage account. So you could build a, a, a system and start trading that system in paper. And once it's working really good, you just say, okay, I want you just instead of connecting to the paper trading side, connect to the real money side and just keep doing what you're doing. So Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I was understanding it on a like a beginner's perspective, but yep. I was trying to also want, I was wondering why a you know trader would also use paper trading. So yeah, I still use it all the time, and this is something that I I, I talk to a lot of traders because you know as you know on on my YouTube channel and everything I do a lot of teaching of uh, algorithmic swing trading is what I do. Right, I come up with algorithms that back test well, and then I use my eye and I swing trade them. And, and what I tell a lot of people is something that back tests well may perform awfully, right? So you want to first back test it and then you want to run it in the real environment, which our paper trading module is really close to a real environment, see how it works. And if it works great, then take it, take it to trading. So it's like, you know, series of like scientific tests, right? Did it work in the history? Okay. Is it working right now? Okay. Now let me risk my money with it. Um, and you know, it's, it takes patience to go from that, but the, the traders that do, I find are the most successful for sure. Um, I'm just going to try see if I fix this and that screen switched for you guys pretty quick, right? When I did that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this one's working. I may have an older, older system. So let's just get rid of that for now. So right now, right. Apple's trading it uh, 220 something. So let's just call it 220, 230, just so I can show you guys what will happen. 
So when you click the buy button, the orders tab, you can see the orders that have taken place for this. They're in the system, right? Now, if you filter and just say by live orders, you can see that we have a live order here for CRM that's out uh, for two shares. So essentially, if I wanted to cancel this order, which I won't right now, I would just hit the cancel order button. If I want to move this order, right, so that it was maybe up here, I can just drag it on the chart and you can see under the, the price there that it's changing. And that's, I don't have my pen on this, my fancy pen, but that's unfortunately, it went 154.38 here. And if I drag it up, it'll be uh, 159 here. So you can move it on the chart as, as you see, and that'll be important for stop losses that are gonna happen in a second here. Um, the other thing, so again, I don't want this order here anymore. I can just click cancel order and the system will just get rid of it. So the next order type, okay. So that's a limit order. Does that make sense to everybody? You're basically saying I'm willing to pay this price. Anything lower when I'm buying is great. Anything higher, just ignore it, right? Uh, the next one is market order, which is very popular, but it's very risky, right? So a market order says, I wanna buy Apple regardless of the price, right? I just want in, I don't care what the price you can get me is, just, just get it to me. Um, the example I use for this is usually an order to get out, right? So say you're, you're in Apple, right? Um, you, uh, you bought it here and all of a sudden the stock's dropping and you're saying, okay, I gotta get out of this thing. Uh, maybe there's some news event or, or something that has happened. Um, you know, you, you bought Apple and all of a sudden iPhones started exploding all over the place, right? So the stock's dropping and you're just saying, I need out and I need out at any price. It's not, it's one of those situations where it's not the time for me to like put in a, a price to see if I can, if I can get a good fill, I just need to get filled. Well, when you click on the price box here in trade ideas, um, you see that there's just the market button, right? And just, it comes here and it stands for M MKT right here. So then when you click this, it's essentially just going to send out an order and you're gonna get filled at whatever is out there. Um, the reason I don't suggest using these very much is because um, if you're using it to get in, if you're just using it to get into just a normal trade, that situation I talked about before could really happen where you want to buy Apple at a hundred bucks, it spikes to 110 and you just go over here and you put in your shares and you click your button and then you get 10% worse on the price than you thought you were going to. Uh, the other thing is that for stocks that don't trade very much, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there that say, the market maker will play little games with your orders and give you a worse price. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just know that this is, this is the emergency order, right? This is a, I need a market order because I need out of this stock quickly. Um, you can combine that with a stop order, which is something I'll go over in just a second, but that's just kind of your get me in, get me out. Don't really care about price. Uh, away you go. Now there's some people that use these for entries, uh, people who trade momentum type stocks, right? They're waiting for that stock to really explode and they wanna get in. They don't really care about the price because they're going for really big moves. That's fine. Just don't recommend it for, uh, for newer traders at all. So the next is a stop limit order. So these next two, and there's only four, so don't worry, I'm not throwing too much at you, but um, these are a little bit more confusing. Um, so a stop limit order basically says, I want to buy the stock when it reaches a certain price, and I'm only willing to pay a certain price over that. So the example I gave is Apple's trading at 100, you say, if it breaks 101 or gets to 101, then I want to buy it, right? I don't want to buy it now. I want to see it move up first and then I want to buy it. But I don't want to pay more than 102 a share, right? So you can fill it in order to do that. And these are my favorite orders and I use them all the time. This is how I do 
90% of my trading now. Um, now that I do a lot of things that kind of keep me away from the screen or, or kind of at different screens. Um, so we'll go back here and I actually posted uh, Twitter plugs on my Twitter, this stock. Now, I don't recommend you guys trade this stock the way I'm going to trade this stock because we're going to make you trend traders. But the way I looked at this is that this stock has come a very long way and it's into an area of resistance. And if you remember our chat on support and resistance, you know, this is usually areas that, um, you know, traders will start to look to take profits. But I just don't like to short things that are going up. I want to see it come down a little bit first to hit me. So for this, I can put out a stop limit, which I did before the market closed, and it's just sitting out there waiting for what I want to happen to happen. So again, this is why I love these orders is you can go and say in our system, um, you put in the symbol, right? TMHC shares, let's go, uh, I don't know, 500 shares. The price, and this is the price that you're willing to pay, right? This is not the, the price you want it to trigger at. This is the price you're willing to pay. So I want to short it if it breaks under $25. Right, so I can put in twenty four ninety nine. Um, sorry, twenty four seventy nine, for example. That means I will sell this stock or short this stock, but I won't short it if it gets lower than twenty four seventy nine, right? And I want to short it when it breaks that twenty five dollar mark. So I'm going to say, uh, say twenty four ninety nine. Right. So basically what I've done um, is I've filled out an order type. And again, this is a stop limit that says I want to short TMHC if the price gets under $25 and I'm only willing to take 20 cents difference in that. So if, for example, tomorrow, you know, overnight, I don't even know what this does. Taylor Morrison home group. Um, they're a home builder. They build homes in the U.S. So if for whatever example, for whatever reason, say the, the, the CEO is a crook and that comes out overnight and the stock opens up at 20 bucks, I'm not going to get filled. I don't have to worry about it, right? My sell is way, way up here, right? So once I hit the sell button, you can see a nice little line is drawn to show I will get in. The stop is $24.99 and the limit is 2479. So basically it's that first order type that we did, but you're letting the system trigger that order type. So you're saying, this is the amount I'm willing to pay, but I'll only do it if and when this, this happens. So let's do it once more on the long side because I see, I see some confused faces. So here we are, and I'm just going to put on my crosshairs here. So here we are in ICE. So ICE is an exchange or a stock exchange, basically. Um, so right now, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, well, if it breaks over uh, 94.72, right, I, I'm interested in it. But if it goes all the way up to like 98 bucks and I'm no longer interested in it, I think that if it breaks this area, it's gonna push and try to take out all-time highs. So again, I can go in and I can put in under the price I'm willing to pay, Right, I'm only willing to pay say 94.81. Right, and the price that I want this to be live at, the price that I'm interested in when the stock hits it, is say 94.50. And then I'll click buy. Right, so now again, what I've done, and you guys probably will have to review this, I think, to really get it, but. Um, what I've done is now said, if the stock gets up to 94.50, then I want the system to send out an order, but the order is only gonna be 30 cents above that. So if it quickly breaks through and it runs like a dollar above that, I just won't get filled, right? If it gaps the next day, we did a lot of talking about why stocks gap, you know, earnings, different news events, then I'm, I'm not gonna get filled. So I'm, I'm able to put these orders in place and just have them work. And if, you know, my own trading, what I do a lot of is 
I spend the evening, you know, an hour or so in the evening and I scan through all my stocks and I put out all my orders and I let them go. And then I'm able to work the next day and do a bit of day trading when I want to and, and consulting with trade ideas and stuff for the rest of the day. And I know my orders are out there. So is there any questions on that? I know that's, that's a hard one for a lot of people. No, does it make sense to everyone? You I'll probably be, have to brush up on it again, but <clears throat> soon in the next few weeks, you guys will be playing with this for sure. Nice. Um, so then the last one is a stop loss order, right? And I just put protect yourself here because especially as a new trader, every order should have a stop loss, right? Especially with you guys are going to be primarily swing traders, right? So your time horizon is going to be, you know, call it a week, week to a month, right? Um, but you, because you're a swing trader, you can't watch the stock all the time. So you need an order to protect yourself. You know, as soon as you get in, excuse me, you put out one of these orders and it says, if the price gets to this level, get me out. Um, and that's exactly what this is, right? So um, I put buy here. I'm going to show this as a sell. I think it will make more sense. So um, essentially what it does is that market order that I talked about uh, here, which it was just get me out at whatever price. It's the same thing as the stop limit order, except when that price is hit, it's going to send a market order to get you out at any price. So say for example, so 219.72, we're in Apple, right? So we bought Apple. Also, I guess something else to note is where you buy and sell will be denoted with this little triangle with a B. Might be hard to see, it's really small. But that just tells me exactly where I bought that stock at. And there'll be a little triangle with an S that will be red and that will tell you where you sell it. So you can go back and, and see how your trading's done. Um, so I bought Apple here, right? And I bought it here because I think it's gonna go higher. But say if it gets down to 215, that's where I'm like, okay, I'm wrong. It's no longer going higher. That's it's turned. It's going to go lower. So I want to just put out an order that will watch this stock for when that happens. So I don't have to think about it. Right. What you'll do is again, you'll go under, make sure your symbol is right. Your shares are right under price. You're just going to leave market or MKT. And you can also do that by, if you click in the box, the top option is always market. And then you just type in your price. So 215 and then sell. And you can see that a red S line just popped up here. So if the price gets down to that level, the system is just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna send out one of those market orders. Remember those are the orders that say, just get me filled. Doesn't matter what, just get me filled. I'm gonna send that order out and just you're going to get out now a couple caveats on this we've talked about gaps a lot you see that apple gap down right here um if it gaps you're not going to get filled in that gap right there's just no trading and there's no price action that's just a risk of trading right we're going to make sure that you guys trade so small and so often that in the course of your trading careers, every time you have a stock gapping against you, you'll have a stock gapping for you and, and you know, all kind of work out the wash. But that's the biggest caveat is that it only, these orders only work between 9.30 and 4 Eastern, right? And, and no other time. So same with the stop limits and same with the normal market orders as well. Um, but again, this is your protection order. So Essentially what you're going to do when you're trading is you're either going to go use a limit order, which was the first example or a stop limit, and you're going to put those out and then you're going to wait until your stock gets hit until your order gets hit or gets filled. And then you're instantly going to go in, you're going to put out your stop loss order. And one thing just aside from order types, but just about trading, every good trader that's ever existed out there, has and knows exactly where their stop will be before they've taken the trade 100% of the time, right? There's, there's an old trading adage that you don't get smarter when you're in the trade, right? When you're in the trade, especially when it's real money and it's your money, you get really stupid. 
you you start to like go online and try to find things to back up your opinion you you do everything that you can to try to be right you don't so you know before and this is what we're going to go over next time is going to be a basic checklist plan um where you're wrong right it's it's every time you enter a trade you don't think this is how much i'm going to make you think this is how much i can potentially lose and then you just instantly put that order out there all right, I think that is all of the order types I wanted to cover. Uh, let me go back in here. Yes, okay. So are there any questions on order types? Does any of that not make sense to anybody? They're, they're fairly simple. You'll, you'll get them quickly, even the stop order ones. Uh, they're a little bit more fancy because they're automated, but... Uh, and just like one sentence, can you explain again the stop loss? I mean, yeah, the stop loss, the last one, because I don't know yep. if for some reason you said, I understand the, the setting the stop limit and then the limit. Yep. The stop loss, is that, you do that after? You yeah, know, it's the same as, so, so you think about, so the, the stop, right, is the, the price at which the order is going to trigger, right? And it can trigger one of two orders, which are the first two orders we covered. It can trigger a stop limit, which says, okay, when it gets to this price, put out that limit order, or it can trigger a stop market, which is the second one. So what this will do, what Apple will do here, is when that price is reached, it just sends out a market order to sell. Whereas the stop limit, would send out that order to say, I'm only willing to pay this much, right? Whereas the stop loss says, I'm willing to pay anything because this is the area that I've determined that I'm wrong. So I just want to send out the order and just, just be done with it. Um, so the stop part is the same. You're just setting a, a place on the chart where you say, okay, this is where I want to get in or this is where I want to get out. What the the other side is doing is the other side is saying, okay, when that price is hit, do I send out a limit order or a market order? Right. And we just always want to get out on a market order just in case you're gone somewhere. Right. In case, again, to use the exploding iPhone example, um, don't sue us Apple, but you know, you're, you buy the stock, you go get a coffee or something. And all of a sudden you come back and holy crap, Apple's down 20% right? You only wanted to lose $50 on the trade, but now you're down $500 on the trade, right? So you're down 10 times what you wanted your risk to be because this event occurred while you were out getting, out getting coffee. So this order basically, as the stock came down and hit 215, it's just going to send out a market order and it's going to fill you at the best it can get, but it's going to get you filled somewhere. That make more sense? All right, guys, so hopefully only one more lesson where we're just going to give you a basic trading checklist, just a, like a Google form. Basically, you'll go through to, you know, tick a couple boxes. Um, all traders use some sort of a checklist, whether it's mental or, or, or actually written down, but I'll give you just a, a super basic one to get you started. And then hopefully after that, the, uh, the paper trading, all the bugs will be fixed, everything will be up and running. And uh, we'll get you guys trading. The game plan after that is to have you guys place a trade or two a week on this server that I'm showing you here. And then you're going to come back and review them. We're going to talk about, you know, maybe what was good, what was bad, uh, what to do better on. You're going to see me start to change through with different people. And we're going to have them kind of talk about their trading styles as well. Um, so less of the, the theoretical and more of the actual kind of nuts and bolts of trading. So. Um, I guess I will see everyone out there next time. Everyone wave while I turn off the recording. <laughs>